I am unashamed. What about you? So we just recently um, celebrated Mother's Day, and uh, which is a cool concept because, I mean, obviously it gave me a chance to publicly acknowledge mom. And because you know, I told the story, mom was a, a teenager, you know, when she found out she was pregnant with me. And she wouldn't, she had just gotten out of her teen years, Jace, when she was pregnant with you. So, I mean, she was married by then and she wasn't with me. But it was really it, it, to, to go through that as a young girl, because when I was able to tell the story, I just had a 16 year old girl read our scripture in our church. So everybody looks and that's what a 16 year old girl looks like. It was her birthday. And then I thought about this thing, because there's mom sitting down there who's now in her 70s, but I thought she was the age of this girl when you and she found out you, you were going to have me. And so I thought, man, what pressure that is to think about that I've got to live now in a way that supports another life as a young girl. And even though you guys did it and you raised me on a college campus, I mean, it's a powerful testament. In our well, it is, and it and Mary wasn't too far away from that age. And exactly. She, she had to undergo having a bad reputation, being slandered, alienated by her family, and she didn't do anything wrong. I mean, yeah. when you think about God allowing and picking her to be that, to, to use her such just an ordinary girl and her heart at that age. And the angel even said... You, great favor is resting upon you. And, you know, she was like, uh-oh. Well, know? I see why God chose her. Right, because, me too. I mean, you know, what a heart to to under to undergo all that. Because there's nothing she can say. I mean, if you say the truth, oh, you know, this is God's baby. I mean, not only do you have a bad reputation, and in everybody's mind you've been cutting up, yep. you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> You've justified it by a lie saying that, oh, this is God. I'm a virgin. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, we need to get her some psychiatric help right now. <laughs> so but, so in this same uh, time I was preaching the sermon, it gave me a chance to acknowledge, Mom, Jason, you were describing that someone would attended that had had a connection to Missy as a mom, yeah. which I thought was a pretty good So we, you know, we invited uh, you know, both sets of parents for Mother's Day. And and y'all came. Phil was there. Had a good meal. It was a nice gathering. But before we had the meal, well, we had a knock on the door, and it was a young girl who, uh, of course, she's college age now, that brought uh, Missy a Mother's Day present. And uh, and so you say, well, what was the story here? And I, I told Phil a little bit of it there, but we met her. I actually. I think I'd met her one time before just as one of uh, my daughter's friends. But where we got to know her well is when I did the infamous uh, look at my daughter's phone and realized that there's some things that Jesus would not approve of. And I told that story in a previous podcast. This is years ago. And my daughter's doing fantastic now. But, you know, the cell phones are or just speeding up the process of teenagers losing their way. And so that was the question that started this whole investigation. I was like, is there anything on your phone? Cause I'm paying for this phone that Jesus wouldn't approve of. And she was like, no, it's fine. You can look, you know, well, after the investigation and the confrontation, it started with us having a lot of come to Jesus meetings right. over what was going on in the phone. And eventually, you know, she found her footing in the Lord. But one of the things I did when I confiscated her phone, because that's what I did, is I went into a Snapchat and got to know her seven closest Snapchat friends. It was a little group because they were earmarked. And uh, people that are familiar with Snapchat will know, you know, where I'm going with this. So I acted like my daughter for a couple of days on there. And look, it wasn't good. <laughs> but after a while, they figured out that this is no longer Mia. <laughs> Something has happened. Well, So I called a little meeting, a little group text. And this is all done through the airwaves here. I don't know what these people look like. They got little icon, but they're seven of her friends. And I said, from now on, uh, you know, the gig is up. I'm Mia's dad. Nice to meet you, but <laughs> at this point, if you want to continue 
a relationship with my daughter and be her friend, she's going in a different direction. <laughs> so if you want to be a part of the new direction, you are welcome to be a part of that. But I don't want you doing what y'all been doing the last two days because I've and I've looked at all your profiles and everything you did because I got access through my daughter. I said, you will need to come to my house with your mom or dad or both, and we'll have a discussion if, if you want to be Mia's friend. If not, nice to meet you. You gave him an exit ramp. Yeah, but, you know. but bye. That's what I did. <laughs> well, the girl who knocked on our door years later and gave my wife a Mother's Day present was one of the girls on that in that group. That's amazing. Now, we've come a long way. In in these years now, where she unannounced, you know, we we never like we didn't. She has parents. She's she's doing fine. Yeah, but she, you know, remembered that connection in that moment in her life where she needed some direction. Because when she came over and brought her mom, we went through the gospel and the reason. You know, Mia was and, and look, we've become friends with yeah. her and her mom, and so uh, and have listen to her many times and try to help her. I mean, she became part of our, our family just as, as Mia's friend. And, uh, she's, and she just came to the Lord just a few weeks ago. Wow. Now, now it wasn't an instant instantaneous. She just searched and she followed and she came around and she studied. And so she just gave her life to Christ. And one of the things she did as a new daughter was she remembered where this all got started and she brought you know, my wife, Missy, a Mother's Day present, you know? And look, we all cried, me, her, because I thought, I was just shocked. I mean, it, it shocked me. So I think it's not a reflection of them being, you know, bad parents. or It, it, it just takes other people to come in there, and part of that was, was what you saw live out there. She was grateful that she's now in the Lord and that she's on her way and that she has a new job and her life is controlled by the Spirit of God. So I wanted to share that. It's very powerful. It's very powerful. And part of that is that reminder. Uh, which very we're, good story. We're going to get to later in Luke, remember when he heals some lepers, but only one came back to say, hey, I appreciate you doing that for me. And and he wasn't an Israelite. As, and I'm just thinking about the story. I think that's right. So it was kind of like that in that situation. Not that all the other people that you had an impact on was not great, but one said, hey, I want you to know. Yeah, and what's fascinating is this girl really wasn't like going out and doing a bunch of wild yeah. crazy. You, you know, it really wasn't about that. It was just kind of a follower, yeah. was part of this little friend group had this weird thing happen where somebody's dad is, you know, it's, I mean, cause that was crazy. And, uh, cause she, sl- she was like, Oh, it was all over Snapchat. I mean, Mia's dad is just throwing haymakers at all her <laughs> friends. You know, it be- kind of became a little viral sensation there, but through that she got some, you know, what, what people need, especially young people is someone who's really trying to help them. And, and we don't have an agenda. That's it. And uh, we listened to her. We, uh, you know, invited her over. We ate meals together. We gave her spiritual direction, but we really we didn't force anything on her. Except, if you want to be Mia's friend, we want to. You want to? Are you being a positive influence or negative? In, if you're going to be a negative influence, we don't want you around here. But if you're open to being positive and listening to why yeah. and what what we believe in then you're welcome here anytime. This will be a safe place. And so, uh, you know, just just saying that, you wouldn't think it worked, but there's been many a, many times throughout the last few years that she's just showed up. Yeah. And look, we have a lot of other people who do that too, young people, and they show up. I mean, the other night we had a whole house full of them. But we want to provide a safe place where they can go when temptation happens or all their other friends are going somewhere else, and uh, we don't make it uncomfortable for them, and we don't try to entertain them. They can just come and hang out and read a book downstairs, you know, if they want, and, right. and people do that. If you want to talk about spiritual things, we'll talk about spiritual things. So I'm a little more aggressive than Missy. Missy's just real friendly with them and yeah. listens to them, and here's what their problems and ask them what they want to do for a living and what, what are you good at. And we've had all these discussions with them. As their parents are doing at the same time. Right. But I think that's something that we need to be aware of. Well, and it's making yourself available for 
spiritual mentoring. Uh, I've got a couple of guys that send me a Father's Day text every Father's Day. They're not my kids, but I put time into them and effort when they were young. Now their fathers are gone, have, have crossed over. And so they see me as a figure that spent some time with them, just like what you're describing. And look, my heart's touched every time because mm-hmm. not only do I hear from my own kids, but I hear from those that I was willing to put my life into. So because of, you were telling me that story, which I thought was powerful, uh, Chris Howard, who is Willie's mother-in-law, and also my next-door neighbor. She, they live in our neighborhood, Chris and Johnny. And a very godly woman. Very godly woman. And she did the announcements uh, on Mother's Day, and I thought it was amazing how she did. And she's a woman that's just it's, – it's amazing how much energy this woman has, but how godly and spiritual she is. And so it, it made me think I, I wanted to at some point get her on the podcast. And so her one of her close friends that she does a podcast with, and also I think they've written a book together – Uh, Shelly Tomlinson has just written a book, and so they wanted to be on the podcast. And so I said, all right, well, let's do that. But I wanted uh, to be able to do that and also have, you know, this idea of women mentoring women and what that means. And so she's written this book about the book of John. So she took the book of John as her entire text for her book. And so we're going to have them on the podcast, but we don't have enough chairs here for everybody. So Lisa and I are going to interview them uh, for our podcast. But I want to let you all know what inspired me, Jason, was this whole story about Mother's Day, that we should have some mothers and grandmothers on here to do that. So uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back from the break, uh, Lisa and I are going to have Shelly and Chris on the podcast uh, to talk about their new book, but also talk about the importance of mentoring and making a difference uh, in people's lives. So I think you guys will enjoy it. I think it'll be great. So y'all get the rest of this podcast off, and I'll take it from here. So, Jace, we talk about this a lot. Um it's important to have a clean weapon. Wouldn't you agree with that when you're hunting? You got to have it. A good marksman never blames his tools or if there's any obstruction, you must clean your gun. So I'm not a great marksman, but I do understand the importance of a clean weapon. I've had some incidents in my past when I was a youngster uh, where I put a couple of bubbles on dad's gun barrels, which was not well received. So I could have used our our friend's barrel buddy back in the day uh, because they've come up with a product uh, that makes sure that your gun barrel is clean because you don't want to try to shoot something through there. It's dangerous uh, and it's not good for your weapon, obviously. Uh, So we highly recommend what these guys do. They say on their package, clean your gun without the grunge, which is pretty good. So they come out with this white polymer. It fits all shotguns, all pistols. So if you're a gun enthusiast, uh, you know, shooting a lot on the range, this is a great product for you. It's a great Christian company. We love that. These guys are believers. Uh, and like us, they're just a small business that saw a need, and they came up with a great product. So we want you to check them out. Go to BarrelBuddy.com. That's B-A-R-R-E-L Buddy.com uh, and check out their products. Welcome back to Unashamed Podcast. We have changed locations. It's like it's like magic, you know. <laughs> we, we started out in the lair, and here we are out of one break, which is amazing. So it's the, the magic. Probably of, something disastrous happened in the lair. Well, yeah. Down here. yeah the, the disaster was trying to get Jay's under control. That's, <laughs> I'm glad we did. I almost feel like I'm on Duck Dynasty. I mean, this is what I it saw. Is. The whole time it of is. the show. This I'm was like, really the, the core. Right. Of it the was show. the scene. Yeah. I'm like, should I be making duck calls? I mean, they're. Yeah. And is Willie yeah. going to walk in the door in a second? Yeah. yeah. He probably, and if he knew you were here, he, he would. would. He would, yeah. he would come he would. in here and cause mischief. But people don't know Chris. So, so let me welcome our guest okay. before, because we just get right into it. We got Chris Howard. Who is Willie's mother-in-law? Yes. If you were Willie's on the show, mother. that's what it would say, Willie's yeah, mother-in-law. Right, exactly. Yeah, because we none of us have a name. Yeah, I, no. I'm I'm Al's wife or Willie's sister-in-law. Yes. I'm like I have a name. I have a name, right. people. <laughs> <laughs> no, that you're exactly right. That's what it would be. And so, if this were the show, he would walk in the door and call me some other name. Yeah, but we'll call you Chris today. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and we have Shelley Tomlinson. Welcome, Shelley. Thank Shelley's you. Shelley's got a brand new book out called "Season the Good Life" that we're going to talk about a little bit later. Okay. So so, um, yeah, so I wanted you to mention that. So a lot of people, so when I go on the road, I try to, like, give the behind the scenes of kind of how we really are or how we are, not just from the show, because yeah. that just has that one. 
But so Willie's always the bad guy on the show trying to get everybody to work. But but you know, Chris, right? What I know right. is he's the biggest goof off and slough <laughs> that er, there ever was, right? I mean, you yeah. know. I don't know if I'd use slough as the mother in law. <laughs> Probably would get me in trouble. But goof off for She's sure. She's so diplomatic. And she, I, and I she tell, handled that so well. Well, I tell people when we travel and people ask about the show that all four of you guys are funny, but the funniest is you and. And Willie. Especially if we're together. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and and you couldn't see that in the show because he was the boss. He was right. running the operation. He had a role. He had his role. So that's what he did. But no, you're absolutely right. He is the craziest. Yeah. I always thought that when I saw the show because I knew, I didn't know you, Al, a yeah. lot before it started airing, but I'd interviewed the guys. And so I'd been around them a little bit. And Willie cracked me up. When he just walked in the room, he'd start something. I'd start laughing. And then you didn't see that. Mm-mm. Yeah. yeah. When, you know. Well, they kind of gave it to Jace. They did. And yeah. Jace is not that person, <laughs> typically. <laughs> but, you know? he, but, but when he would look into the camera and do his little cameos, yeah. I mean, they just, they nailed it. He yeah. was hilarious. Yeah. 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 yeah, Jace is more serious in in real life than he, and on the show, he's kind of goofy. And yeah. he's dry humor. He has a lot of dry humor. He does. Yeah. It's like dad. Dad's super funny, really without trying to be, just right. by being dad. Right. You know, yeah. so it's just, you know, I laugh because he does things and never says. But yeah. I don't feel like you and Willie try either. Y'all are just funny. Yeah. Right. It's a different kind of funny. Well, we're yeah. really good at, like, if somebody makes a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Pointing it out. We're yeah. really Y'all good are at, really good at that. <laughs> they call it pouncing, I think. <laughs> We love yeah. to pounce. Yeah. Should I be nervous at this point that I'm going to misspeak no. and Al's going to pounce? Absolutely not. I, uh, not I'm, with a mother like Kay. Not okay. if you're misspeaking. Okay. That's, oh, no, not that's at right. all. That's right. I adore her misspeaks. So, so Chris, just to, to, for everybody to know, so we go way back. Way back. Way back. Whenever Lisa and I were probably only been married less than five years yeah. Uh, we came to White's Ferry Road. We had been out at another little church. We had started out close, and then we came back. And so Chris and Johnny became, you know, good friends of ours then, invited us. We had never been to the beach before, um, and we couldn't – we didn't have two nickels to rub together. So yeah. this, is, this is back in the day. This is when preaching school was a step up financially. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was like, oh, somebody will pay me money to go yeah. learn the Bible? Yeah, I'm in. I'm in. Yeah. yeah. And so Chris and Johnny were super – gracious and took us along on some of their family vacations and just, you know, opened a door for us mm-hmm. that we had never seen. Yeah. And, uh, and they, they also helped support us along with the rest of their family. So we go way back uh, to an appreciation, but also just been, you know, friends yeah. and, and involved in mission work and camp mm-hmm. and so many different years. It's, it's been a blessing. A lot so more next door things. neighbors. And next door neighbors, yeah. which sometimes we don't even think of that because we're all so busy. We don't yeah. see each other in the neighborhood. We see each other at other things right. that we that we do, but we are next door neighbors. And that's super fun for us because when my sister moved next door to us, we made her promise to never, ever move. And she did. Well, she broke that promise, yeah. mm-hmm. but she <laughs> sold the house to Al and Lisa. So we, Upgrade. It was, it was a win. <laughs> Got an upgrade on that one. I don't <laughs> know that O'Neill would believe that. <laughs> well, she'll never. Want That's to. great. That's yeah, great. she'll she'll never hear this. She'll just, never hear this. Hey, just like y'all thought, I wouldn't hear the one where I was thrown under the bus from my cooking, which was that unashamed podcast. Well, who knows? That? Were you there? Uh, I don't know. But, but Corey claims that I would the, never talk about you. Well, Corey out. said that whoever's not in there on it is going to get thrown under yeah. the bus. Well, that's right. So apparently, yeah. uh, it was you. John Luke was trying to defend me yeah. and my cooking, and Willie was like not having any of the defense <laughs> at all. Oh, well, that could have been ours because yeah, we had we had Willie and John Luke on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, that's yeah. I didn't remember them throwing you under the bus, but I'm not surprised. No, not they not didn't. surprised. No, <laughs> Willie's actual comment was something like John. Luke was saying at two mama's house, which is me, the kids get to eat first. At the Robertson house, the men, the adults eat first and the kids just get whatever's left right, over. So you. John Luke was trying to be nice and Willie says, y'all eat last at my house because they don't know if it's any good. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and this is where I, I, we, now it's coming back to This you, is okay. where we need to say, let's yeah. go to the video, right? <laughs> I want to see that part. <laughs> now it's coming back to you, yes. So anyway, and I, of course, I was a little bit offended because most of the t- time the food I serve at my house isn't mine. <laughs> it's, it's other people's. And I'm like trying to defend them. No, yes. Mamma cooks really good, and Joe Neal, everybody does. So. We used to have a joke that Chris, they had a, at Johnny's Pizza, at the closest one to where we live, there was just a button that said, Howard.
corridor. <laughs> yeah. And so, like, when their family would call in and say, this is Chris Hire, yeah, boom, you'd hit the button, <laughs> the order went in. It was just, you yeah. didn't have to worry about yep. it. Yep, Lloyd, Lloyd Williams, who lived across the street from us, said he's never seen Johnny's pizza truck so, uh, <laughs> car so much as <laughs> living next door to us. Well, of course, Nestle is funny because, so, Chris mentioned that we bought her sister's house, so... Mm-hmm. When we all got famous and, and got a couple of dollars in our pocket, right. not from the early days, we were like the Beverly Hillbillies. We, yeah. we just we moved into the neighborhood. We ascended. We, yeah, and just ascended. came in and started buying up. So now we're all there in with Corey's family on the right. same yeah. street. You, do yeah. you have a cement pond? I got a cement pond. Okay. Uh-huh. No doubt about it. And a trailer. <laughs> I got a trailer. That's right. <laughs> I had to redneckify it just yeah. a little bit. Right. So right. I put a trailer back there behind yeah, our I house. I had to remind them who exactly right. <laughs> had moved into the neighborhood. <laughs> and Willie says in the wintertime from his Taj Mahal up on the yeah. mountain up there, he can look down and see my little double wide. You know, so. in, in front of that the cement pond. In front of the cement pond. That's yeah. exactly right. That is too good. We just like to keep it real in our neighborhood. I think so. Yeah, there we are. Right. We're so, all there. so, Shelly, you're from Lake Providence, so, mm-hmm. so you're one of those uppity people, you know, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, I, I, that took me far a little loop there. I really you weren't expecting that. Never way. been introduced to Lake Providence <laughs> as the uppity people, but in a way, because I did, uh, I was raised. 20 minutes outside of Lake Providence. So I was kind of like coming to town. When I came to Lake Providence, it was a big thing. So then I came to the city right? from Alsatia. So I guess I'm pretty uppity so because to, I'm from Lake Providence. So to our audience who may not know Louisiana geography, mm-hmm. uh, and Lisa. Uh, <laughs> and Lisa. <laughs> she, she goes by, when I, I say east or west, she's, she looks at us at the mall. Right. You know what I mean? It's just like you My have to. My grandson, Al, just two days ago was telling me something. He was asking a question, and this is Weston is nine. And he says, well, she, well Keggy, was that north or, or did you, was that west of so-and-so or is that north? And I mean, he's asking me a question with the words that I don't use in my everyday language. You know, yeah. it's like, well, Weston, I'm sorry to break this to you, but Keggy does not speak north, south, east, west. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me either. I don't do that. He's, he rephrased his question. When you were looking at it, Keggy, was it at the left or the right? I was like, okay, I understand that. Uh-huh. Well, that's what I have to do with Lisa. So just... Can you imagine like a, a U.S. map? Do you know what our country looks like? We could, <laughs> and I'm you, like, no, no, not really. I, you know, so I don't know. It's a lost cause. But, I get it. I get it. No, Lisa. I, I so get Lake it. Providence is east of here. This is true. Uh, between they here tell me and this Mississippi. Is true. Yeah, exactly right. For, for those that can read a map, they're yeah. listening. So. And Lake Providence is farming country. Yes. So her husband is a farmer. Oh yeah, we farm. My husband farms right outside Lake Providence, and. I drived all the way to the big city of Monroe, West Monroe, when this I did just drop. about anything. Right. Yeah, yeah. This is it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we see people at the airport all the time that live over that way because mm-hmm. it's the place to come to the airport. So it's a floodplain, basically, from Monroe to the Mississippi River. Mm-hmm. That's why it's so flat. And, of course, there's why well, the farming and the, and the soil is rich. So, I mean, it's a, lot, it's a, it's a great area. It's a, a lot of good, life. good folks. Yeah. yeah, I live on the lake there, and it's little bitty tiny Lake Providence. And I get to say I have the best of both worlds because I get to travel and speak and see, see everything. But then I get to go home to this little bitty town on the lake, and I love it. Yeah, you get your retreat. That's mm-hmm. kind of how we feel. So, so tell us how you got into what you do. I mean, you've written books. You, you're a speaker. You, you know, how does that, how did, how did that, we, we were on TV, so you yeah. know, I know how it happened for us, <laughs> but how did it happen for you? Did you just kind of get really, asked to do stuff or what? It's really hard to kind of retrace it in a way that doesn't take all the oxygen out of the room. So let me try to make it as succinct so we could talk about something that's more fun. But let's see. I had always been infatuated with words and I, my children were in high school. And I started trying to finally put those things down on paper. And I'm a little bit like you referenced earlier, Al, when we were talking before we came on air, the first time someone had read something of mine and they wanted to come and have me come speak. And I thought, to a room of people? And they offered to pay me money to come and speak to a room of people? <laughs> to do what you'd like to right? do? Are yeah. you kidding? And I get to talk about Jesus, which is my favorite subject ever. Yeah. I mean, could this be any better? So I kind of fell into it that way. People began to be aware of my writing. I, the internet was really young, and I created a website, and I started putting things out. And so word of mouth, someone started asking me to speak, and then another person. And I actually, the book you're holding is my 12th book. 
but I self-published three books before I got a traditional publisher and an agent and all the deal because no one would let me in to the little tight-knit publishing mm-hmm. circle. It's they hard to, they it's were hard all to like, Shelly who, you know, yeah. and why do we care what you're saying? And so I have a type A personality. So the podcast, the self-publishing came about because no one would let me in. They would say things like, well, you really need an agent to get published. And then they would say things like, but agents like to represent people that are published. And I'm just like, the original chicken and egg, how do you get in? So I self-published and it was the sales of those first three self-published books that finally got an agent's attention. And So one of our um, really favorite sponsors of our podcast is a, is a group called Covenant Eyes. And I've been aware of these guys since really way back in the 80s, um, 90s, you know, whenever they were doing a lot of stuff with promise keepers because, you know, pornography is such a scourge that the evil one has used um, to hurt people, to hurt, you know, not just men, men, women, families, all of it. It's, uh, I would say, Jace, it's the evil one's false reality right because there's nothing real about it it's not real in relationship or anything else no it's an illusion that attacks marriages healthy marriages in fact uh, they gave us some statistics of 56 percent of divorces list pornography as a major factor leading to divorce that's over half that say that pornography plays a role in that almost half of christian families say that porn is a problem in their home right now and this one is really jarring. 90% of children ages 8 to 16 have viewed pornography online, most of it while they were doing their homework. So it tells you right now that this is a huge thing. Uh, these guys are really helpful, uh, and they're going to help you fight and win this fight. Uh, they bring integrity and accountability, which is what you need to get past this uh, porn addiction. You can sign up for free 30 days of Covenant Eyes today when you go to CovenantEyes.com. Enter the promo code Phil to get you started. So check these guys out. It's a great way to have accountability for your life, to change your life for the better. Free 30 days of Covenant Eyes. CovenantEyes.com. Enter the promo code Phil and get started today. So I was looking in the back of this book, and these must be funny books i guess by the by the uh, titles mm. suck your stomach in and put some color on yeah is the title of one of your books now yeah. is, that, is that just a humor book or what oh, is yeah. that that's just kind of that's pure humor it says the you. subtitle is what southern mamas tell their daughters the rest of y'all should know too <laughs> and so i just kind of unpack it for the rest of the world which i think to, for me as we were in the publishing business for many years that was her ace in the hole, too, was that humor, She's that funny. southern humor. And so when she, I can remember years ago, I really didn't even know Shelly. She came to the publishing company mm-hmm. and um, talked to me about her humor books, but that she wanted to do a more serious book like this one is. And from a publish, publisher's viewpoint, I told her, honestly, a lot of publishers don't want that mix. You yeah. know, it's one or the other. That was really one of the hard things for me yeah. in publishing was people wanted to pigeonhole me because right. mm-hmm. I, I would I came out with humor mm-hmm. first. It was the first book that was mm-hmm. published. They didn't want me to cross genres, you know, yeah. because they were like, your humor sells. But my humor and my storytelling for me when I'm speaking to an audience it is it to open their hearts up. It right. is to plow their hearts up so that they can hear what I have to say that matters. You got it. Because even this, though I love the stories about my family, I love to. I love the humor. It is. It's in vain if yeah. it doesn't have a more eternal mm-hmm. right. uh, point and reward for it. No, that's know? my style too. I mean, I, I'm right. always funny. Tell a funny story, yeah. to, but but it opens people. That's up. what it's for. So Lisa and I, when we speak on the road. So I come out and do my whole opening. And really, it's just to get everybody relaxed. And I tell funny stories about the family Mm -hmm. and then begin to set it up where we're going. And then she goes in and it's just like, you know, then then it's really. But but they're open. They're open then because I like to say to realize that everyone comes in with something hard. They may have their mask on and it may not look like it, but life's hard when it's good, like we all know. And so they all come in and they're sitting there and they're they have their hard thing and right. they can't hear what you say right. so when you get them to laughing and having a great time then their hearts begin to soften That's right. and then it's just there for the word there was a preacher chris jeff walling that mm-hmm. was when i was you know forming my style was really popular and we we heard him a lot and, and that's what i learned from him 
Yeah. Is he was so funny and he told such great stories. But then he was when he came in with his stuff, you were you know you you were relaxed, you were ready, right? And so that's kind of how I model myself after his. Which is what Shonda Pierce has done so well because her story was so tragic. Yeah. But you're laughing Mm -hmm. all the way until you're crying. That's Mm -hmm. right. Because she was she's able to mold that right where Shelley doesn't have the tragedy to it element to it but she has the humor and then that love for Jesus that she just weaves in so beautifully that um, an audience loves um, yeah, so did y'all that. meet with the publishing stuff How did well, we y'all? know originally yeah. with that originally but, but then, but then Chris invited was, me to speak yeah I was doing uh, those mom events so for five years oh, in yeah. a row we did fairly large about a thousand women mom events here in Monroe Louisiana and um, I wanted Shelly for that humor part yep. for that humor element because you want that in your panel of speakers mm-hmm. right. you know somewhere so I asked Shelly to be a part of that and then that was really kind of the beginning mm-hmm. but she lives in Lake Providence so it's not like she's next door or right. close so yeah. we were just kind of back and forth and then she started radio and I started radio so we got together a few times talking radio. Yeah. How do we do this radio life? Uh, then I was on her show. She was on mine, kind of back and forth with that sort of thing. And, and we just uh, kind of yeah. kind of grew. Yeah. And y'all did a book together. Well, a few years ago, she approached me because I was kind of, I had, my radio was It's a Mom Thing, and I did that for 10 years. <laughs> can, can I say I'm paying close attention because I cannot remember how Rocking It Grand <laughs> happened. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm like, okay, okay. so how, how did this next okay. part I learn stuff all the time <laughs> on the podcast. <laughs> how did this next part I'm happen? I'm going to tell you my <laughs> version. I'm not positive that that's right, but I'll tell you my version. We have a joke in our whole family that Jeremy and I remember the least amount yeah. of the whole family. Like we call, ask Joan. Neil, who's my older sister, and she says something, and we don't know if it's but true. Joe but Neil we just knows like, things. She knows things. Yeah, she knows. Okay. Well, but Chris, you know, in our family, we, if we don't know, we just make it up. That's it. Well, I so, know, and yeah. see, that's why we're not sure if Joe Neil's doing, <laughs> yeah. but right. we don't know. So that's we, right. you know, anyway. So anyway, she a few years ago, I had done the whole mom thing, and which I love. Still, we still love to do a lot for moms and young moms and older moms. But I was kind of turning my attention ministry wise to more grandparenting things. And Shelly called one day and said, why don't we team up and, and try a website, <laughs> lifestyle site, podcast, those kind of things. That's and not happened. Yeah. That's not happened. And so I was like, okay, because it always seems a little bit easier where there's two of you. Because mm-hmm. taking on something like that you're going to have to do every week and keep it up, like you guys know with even this podcast, right? it's like, you know, it's... It's part of a job. It's a lot. It becomes a job. And so... So we called that Rocking It Grand. We call that Rocking It Grand. And we both had the desire to help people understand that, you know, your kids are not going to accidentally pick up the faith of Jesus Christ. You've yeah. got to be intentional right. about your parenting and your grandparenting. And I knew Chris had that same heart and that same passion. So Rocking It Grand grew out of that. And then, yeah, then we released a book by the same name, have a podcast by the same name, because we can't think of other names, I guess. I don't know. But. <laughs> well, we racked our brain for weeks, and they were like, why aren't we naming it something else? Let's name it what the podcast just, is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's really amazing, because I've said this before, that you have podcasts, because we've had several in our family that have had podcasts when it first kind of became a thing. Mm-hmm. But not, none of them have lasted very long because unless you have oh my gosh. some specific content Thank you. <laughs> over the long period of time, you know, you just getting together telling stories is not going to last for that long. Okay, right? oh, you're reading my mind right yeah. now because yeah. I, when I came off of live radio, so I did live radio, my own show called All Things Southern with Shelly for 10, maybe 11 years. And when I came off of live radio, basically because God got me long long enough to say, you know what, you can't do everything that you're doing. I'm the one that's infinite. You're finite. We got to figure out something else. And so I came off live radio to open up more ministry time, and I went to podcasting. And my intention out was to podcast regularly. And now that little podcast, it's called The Story Table, and it just kind of floats around out there, and I say something when I want to say something. <laughs> yeah. But I don't do it the way I thought that uh, I was going to do it, and, and I'm always meaning to. Right. It's, it's, I it's a, you know, I mean, I, I always say it's, it's a grind, but it's a great grind. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. in our case, yeah. when they approached us from Blaze about doing Unashamed, mm-hmm. 
they had they wanted us to do Bible, and I was like, well, that's great because that's the only thing I know <laughs> I can do that that we can do a long time. Yeah, right. Because you know, you're not gonna run out of soap with the Bible. You yeah, can just turn around and do it again. Uh, yeah, and so I get the blessing on our podcast of getting the the shared wisdom of Jace and Dad and Zach. And so if you put all of our teaching experience of the Bible mm. together, it'd be, you know, 125 years of teaching. Right. Yeah. You know, collectively. And so, you know, it really has, you know, strengthened my faith just being yeah. a part of I that discussion that. day in that. and day out. So, but I look at other podcasts and I think, mm, I mean, unless you're doing current events or guests or something, it's hard to keep it going because right. it's, yeah. it's a lot of work. So, yeah. Yeah. so but, I understand. Well, we're kind of the same way for us. Christian Parenting, which is a network out of Dallas, yeah. approached us about a prod- podcast on grandparenting. And I think that's the only way we keep this going because, because they keep us niche. going. Yeah. And right. it's, you know, they expect a certain number by a certain day. Then they we send it to them. They take care of it over there. So what's the name of this podcast? You're talking about? <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> Rocking, Rocking it grand. grand. Rocking it grand. We can't okay. think of another. <laughs> <laughs> so we basically, we're else. just going to throw that's a dart right. at rock in the grand. That's, what's, what, that's, that's the, it. That's whatever right. it is. Let's, let's take another break. One of our newer uh, sponsors of our, of our podcast is a group called Jace Medical. And uh, not our Jace. Uh, they had their own reasons to call it that. It's an acronym. Uh, and what they do is, you know, you live out someplace in the middle of nowhere, you're in another country, maybe you're just camping or off, you get sick, and you don't have your meds. And so you're in a bind, or maybe there's a supply chain issue. And so uh, this this doctor came up with the idea that we need to figure out a way to get people an emergency supply of meds. And so people like me who take meds every day, I take uh, high blood pressure meds, you know, you can only get a little bit at a time. And so you got to go back in, you got to go back through your doctor or whatever. So these guys have a 12 month emergency supply uh, of your medication uh, that you can have. And so that's really a lot of peace of mind to be able to have that. If you're traveling in another country, if you do mission work, you know, a lot of different reasons why you might need that. And so these guys can supply that for you. It's kind of your backup. Uh, it's, it's simple, uh, to go online, uh, to their website, you fill out a form, uh, you're going to get your Jace daily is what they call it. Prescription delivered right to your door. Um, it's going to give you the peace of mind that you're looking for, no matter what's going on. So, uh, if this, uh, hits you where you are, be sure and check these guys out. Go to Jace medical, J A S E medical.com and enter the code unashamed at checkout for a discount on your order. So unashamed at Jace medical.com. I want to talk about uh, uh, this book uh, because I love it. I, I love you. the concept. I hadn't read the whole thing. Yeah. I just kind of had to skim it because we're we're about to go on vacation, right. so we're going to read it. Right. But I loved that you based it on John, oh. which is and so that was my first question to you. So, were you were you in John and thought, man, I need to write a book, or did you think I need to write a book and I'm going to John? Which mm. which came was the chicken and the egg on the okay. on the John study because it's so good. You're in the way. By the way, so I love that you have humor, yeah. in in the, the in your structure here because I laughed out loud two or three times with Yay. the stuff you said in there. You know, yeah. so I, I, love I really love it. So so yeah, which came first? Were you just in love with John and said I'm based my book on that, or was it the other way around? It really was that. I, I just love John's gospel. Yeah, I do too. And I always point people there when they say, "I wish I loved God's word like you did, but I don't." And I'm like, "Okay, this is what I want you to do. I want you to get in John's gospel and don't leave." You know, just stay there and don't try to get through it. Just live with it and just just let it, you know, begin to speak to you. Let the Word talk to you, and you'll become a Word lover. So I've always loved John's Gospel, and one of the things that I've loved about it is how John is very real showing you the disciples' progression. Like, we meet them, and they're not heroes of the faith. Right. You know, they are stumbling, bumbling. Anybody identify? Mm -hmm. I do. Mm -hmm. Disciples taking two steps forward and one step back, they don't understand anything. And so we identify with them, right? right? They don't understand what Jesus is about, what he's after. And then we get to watch them grow. But one of the beautiful things about John's gospel is why they're growing. Jesus is right there strengthening their faith. Yep. He holds 
his harsh words and his criticisms, his, his judgments, anything like that for those who are opposed to the gospel. But those who are after him, he is there to strengthen their faith. And I want people to know he's not grading from a distance. He's like right there. And I, Chris and I are actually talking about this yesterday. Al, one of my favorite parts of it, guys, is that they are shown growing in their faith. And John uses verbiage like, Jesus did this, and so we believed. Yeah. But he had already said that a couple chapters earlier. And then he says it again, right. and you see him saying, yeah, we believe, but he's just like we all are. Mm-hmm. Lisa, we're, we're walking on this mm-hmm. dusty planet with doubts and things that happen. And not only would he say that, but you can hear Jesus saying, okay, guys, I told you this. This is Shelley paraphrase. But he says, okay, guys, I told you this so that when this other thing happens, you'll believe. Right. right. And we go, didn't they already believe again? Yes. Yep. And so the whole message of seizing the good life is that, of course, Jesus is the good life. Mm-hmm. We know this. But that Jesus is there, and he wants your growth, your faith to grow. He wants to strengthen mm-hmm. you. He's not judging your growth as long as you're after him. He's just there helping. So that's so I, what I wanted to get across. I loved uh, Another thing I loved is you, you structured your book uh, in a really interesting way. Because you kind of have three components, uh, which I thought was a really cool concept. Because, you know, we do a lot of publishing yeah, of our I, family books, I, and so I know Chris is in this world. So I'm always intrigued when people come mm-hmm. up with a, a creative idea. So tell about that. So you have three. <laughs> you, you, dear John. This you know. seems to be coming up a lot in interviews. But <laughs> we talked about this yesterday, and, and when it, we were talking about it in our interview, yeah. because it's so different. And I remember when she came to me with the idea, uh, how do you say uh, that's weird, but in a real <laughs> polite kind of way. To your you know, friend, like, you know, so like, that's you wearing weird. your friend hat or your editor hat? That's yeah. Like, yeah, I was yeah. like, okay, I'm trying to yeah, put, she put on her editor hat. Yeah, that's good. Like, okay, not, I've, I've never heard of that before, yeah. but you've got a vision for it, so go for it. That was and the my truth. agent and, said the same thing when when I brought him the idea, and you know, they're going to begin shopping it and see where it's going to land. They're like, I'm not really sure it's going to land anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> because it's so different. And so what we're talking about, the difference, is that each chapter is built on the corresponding chapter of John. Yep. And each one of my chapters is broken into three segments. And the first one is Dear John. And that's where um, I just write to John. Yeah. And I tell everyone it's not meant to be any type of seance. I always do that disclaimer. That's not biblical. Mm-hmm. you know. So it's not that. But it's me talking to John about what it was like when Jesus broke in to their world so that we can recognize, you know, him and ours. So the first one, I just talked to John about whatever, you know, is on my heart about that chapter and what's going on. And then Dear Reader is the next section. And that's where we unpack the meat of the corresponding chapter. It's the Bible study part. And then there's a Dear Jesus. And that's a journaling prayer at the end of it to help us implement what we've learned during the study part. And so it really is, my agent said, okay, you've written something that's really, it's like nonfiction, but it's an epistolatory novel, but it's also got humor in it. I'm not sure where they're going to put this, you know, <laughs> on the shelves. And you but, know, I t- but I tell you what it makes it uh, for me was easy to read. It, I, it's yeah, it's easily heart, yeah. readable. And I it, told Shelly what it does for the reader is it teaches us how to have a relationship with the Bible. Yeah, because right. yeah. we do. We all know the verse that the Bible is alive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but we can't always figure out how to make that. How does that make sense? Exactly. But when you read how she talks to John, yep. and then shares Jesus, you also, as a reader, maybe somebody new to the Bible study, figures out. Oh wait, this is how I have a relationship. I under I really understand and can communicate with John about what he said and what he did and yep. how that worked. So I just think she did it. She nailed it. She did it. It's Thank very you. good yeah. and and very conversational. And like I said, it's it's a it's a very easily readable book. So I would encourage people to be sure and get it. So one of the things I want to mention just to a little bit of it because I, I couldn't help but so I went to to chapters that I love. The, mm-hmm. John is great. I mean, we, you could almost pick any chapter, right, and find yeah. something fascinating. And it's such a condensed, you know, gospel mm-hmm. because it just gets in right there at the mm-hmm. end. And it's like you know, I think that's why it's so good. But John eight 
is probably one of the most unique and interesting chapters in all of the Bible, and especially in the book of John, because it starts out with this early morning Bible study, you know, him, him teaching, mm-hmm. you know, in the temple courts early in the morning, mm-hmm. it says. So, you know, these are people there that are serious about doing it. You think about Bible class, who, who's going to come, you know, at daylight right. you know, to serious. church? Yeah. Yeah. They're serious, right? Yeah. Wiping, and so, wiping the sleep out of their eyes. And then right. they, and Drinking then they, and, and as you, you uh, paint a uh, great in, in this chapter, you know, they drag this woman in. Yeah. And then, of course, it becomes about her. Mm-hmm. But it's all about trying to trap him. Yeah. And so that's the setting, you know, and you and you painted that beautifully. And but what's amazing to me about the chapters is you keep going. Like that happens. That would have been a great chapter, just mm-hmm. that story. Yeah. But then it keeps going. Because then he keeps teaching and then some people believe. Yeah. Then he challenges their belief and says, Well, if you know, you, if you know the truth, the truth will set you free. Well, yeah. we're not. We've ever been slaves of any. So and then it winds up with this harsh you're your son of the devil, you're yeah. ch- you know. Then at the end, they go back, some of these same people, I'm sure, that were there, because mm-hmm. now it's a bigger group, and they pick up the rocks again, but this time they want to stone him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And just the bookend of that chapter is so powerful. And so I, I immediately went to that one in here and read it, and you did a really good job. You focused more on the, the woman part, which yeah. I think is a powerful right. story. So. Talk a little bit about that, just kind of things like that that motivate you when you're writing it. I mean, it's just yeah. it's so rich. you know. I think, um, like I was listening to you and thinking, wow, I want to read that again. What did I say? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because that was interesting. Hearing your take on it out was fun for me. But I think each chapter, and even as I wrote it, like we were talking yesterday, and, and we keep referring to that, but it's just so fresh on my mind that I learned – like with the reader, hopefully, when I was writing this, I learned all the way through it. And I have loved the Gospel of John forever. And I've always been deeply invested in it. But writing on it, when I felt like, okay, now it's time. And I began writing on it because of the pandemic. And the whole wide world was freaking out. Yeah. And John's Gospel can speak directly to that. That we are not, we are called, we can have and we're called to have peace and to have joy in the midst mm-hmm. of everything that's going on. And so that's how I knew it was it was time, you know, to write on it. But then I would get in a chapter like you're describing and that I had already always just kind of thought about the woman only. You yeah. know, that was the story of right. 10. You kind of have an idea from each chapter that right. stuck with you. And then when I would see it in the larger picture and everybody that was – watching this develop and realize that they all saw it all. They saw the early morning study. They saw Jesus with his graciousness to her. Yeah. And then because they could not accept that truth. That's right. You know, those rocks turned to him That's instead. Right. And um, I think I would have like a little mini revival with each <laughs> chapter. I'm like, okay, I need to rest now, you know, before well, I go on. One of the greatest uh, drop the mic lines in the entire Bible is in John 8. Mm-hmm. Before Abraham was born, I am. Mm, Boom! Yeah, right. Drop the mic. You know what I mean? Yeah. It just so that that particular chapter for me. I mean, I could I could teach that and oh, I could just and just turn around and teach it again and teach it again. (laughs) And we put it in our uh, one Uh of the chapters in uh, Desperate is is about her. And Lisa does a really nice job talking about her own life. Yeah. And understanding it right from the perspective of that woman being in that situation where once you once you're out. In, in, mm-hmm. in who you've been and where mm-hmm. you've been, there's nothing left you can do right. other than either be forgiven and move on yeah. as Jesus did with this woman or not. You know? Because I think I think each one of us, um, and especially those of us who are living a a sinful life, mm-hmm. you know, we're we're not one of those who are seeking Christ. Mm-hmm. You know, we're mm-hmm. seeking our own fulfillment. Um, I think we all have to be naked. Mm-hmm. We all have to be brought before Jesus naked, right? Because that's the only way we can see where we are and and the shame of the living that we're in. Because you just think about whenever they brought her and dropped her in front of those people. I mean, you know, I think of my body here. Oh. I don't want anybody seeing worst me naked. thing ever. No. <laughs> and especially, I don't want it uh, in front of what yeah. they can consi- what she probably considered to be religious people right yeah because they're sitting there you know yeah. with Jesus so I mean I just look at it and think 
she had to she had to become naked. She had to be thrown out there naked in order for her to see the shame mm-hmm. of her life right. and for her to accept Christ. Mm. And That's at the so same good. time, they, you know, these people that were out there, I've, I really feel like for, for just a moment, mm-hmm. they got it. Yeah. I mean, because he says, those of you who have never sinned, yeah. you cast that first one. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you just think about it. Mm-hmm. Think of think in your own mind of the things that you think. And I'm thinking of, of men, you know, that mm-hmm. and so they're thinking those thoughts that I just had. Right. Those things that I might have said yesterday, the way I looked at that woman yesterday. I mean, okay, well, I I can't throw this rock. Mm-hmm. And so it, it worked for a little while, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Until they were like, no, I'm, I'm not letting this guy. It said the older, older ones. From the the older, older ones. To the younger. That's right. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Because more there sense. was more wisdom there. Mm-hmm. Right. You know? and, and probably more sins piled up. Yeah. That's and exactly They began right. thinking yeah. through their life. You know, when you said mic drop, I just wanted to say this. I love the mic drop in chapter seven. It's one of my favorites. When Jesus stands at the end of the festival and he says that he is the living water. You know, yeah. he, he makes that proclamation. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I would love to have time to unpack that whole chapter, yeah. but I'm going to try to make it really quickly. It's at the end of a celebration, right. guys, where that's all about the water. Mm-hmm. For seven days in that celebration, there would be a procession with a priest leading it to the pool of Siloam where they'd get the water and then they'd pour the water out on the altar. And and every time that they would do it, they would have like a parade and procession. I mean, think Mardi Gras without the debauchery. I mean, it was just big, you know, big, loud celebration. And then they'd pour that water out and it symbolized for the Jewish people, the living water that was going to be poured out on them one day, that one day God would pour his water out on their nation. And at the very end of that, I love the mic drop. When Jesus stands up and they have got to the the height of their celebration, and I said in the book that I read a quote that I loved that said, the old ancient, in the in the ancient days, the older guys would say, if you had never seen this celebration, you had never seen one. I mean, yeah. that's how the Jews mm-hmm. thought about this party. So at the end of the party, when they've been talking about this living water for seven days, Jesus stands up and he says, I am the living water. If anyone is thirsty, come to me and drink. They, We just read that, and we think it sounds pretty and nice, but they knew what he was saying. Mm-hmm. They knew he was saying everything that's been prophesied, everything everyone's taught, about, all the dreams he was saying, I'm it. But my favorite thing is that he doesn't say if any rich man or poor woman or well-to-do guy or, you know, he puts no disclaimers, no anything. Yeah, it's it. just, are you thirsty? Yep. And so you can look at that, and that's the only thing we have to bring to Jesus. Are you thirsty? Yeah. If you're thirsty, I'm the water. Right. You know, and, and yeah. I mean, it just brings it down. So yeah. good. Um, it simplifies it. You know, simplifies it. Yeah. Are you thirsty? I'm that's the water. Right. So that's you right. know what we say is when we know we have a good podcast is when it's over and you and you didn't even, it seemed like we just sat out. <laughs> Seriously. Because <laughs> yes. we're, we're, we're out of time. Are we through? This was fun. <laughs> we're out of time. But we do have an overtime segment because there are a couple of questions I didn't get to ask. So okay. we'll save that for overtime. Uh, folks can find the book where do they buy books is there any absolutely you have a website you said I do What's you that? can shellyt.com made it really easy it used to be bell of all things southern and it was just like hard to say <laughs> shelly t and all so right. it's ie on shelly shellyt.com will get you to me yep. and then all my links are there and all my books are there but again you can find it on amazon or wherever books are sold Perfect. Well, we really appreciate you guys coming on the podcast. And our audience is all the time saying, we need the wives on more. We more need women. women. We more need women, more women, right. more women. <laughs> so we fulfill that today. If you want to follow us over for overtime to continue our discussion with Chris and Shelly and Lisa, you can do that at blazetv.com slash unashamed. So we'll see you on the other side. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube And be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.